What's up everybody, Rhett Thompson, and I've got my S5 here. It's a full frame mirrorless camera from Panasonic, but the principles of this video will work on pretty much any full frame camera, as well as any APS-C lenses you might wanna mount onto that full frame camera. I'm not really gonna talk about the differences specifically and go into the details about full frame APS-C, micro four thirds, lenses, flange distance, but Hopefully you can find some other resources in the comments about those things if you're confused. But basically a full frame camera, I mean, look here. It's got a very big mount, a very big sensor. It's a full frame camera. It's got four times the area of micro four thirds. But long story short, you know, full frame 35 millimeter is the standard. And an APS-C is a 1.5 times crop factor and micro four thirds is a two times crop factor when compared to that standard 35 millimeter sized sensor. So yeah, you'll be cropping in 1.5 times into the center of your sensor, no matter what full frame camera you've got and no matter what APS-C lens you've got. So what are the negatives of that really? Well, first thing I wrote down was worse noise performance and technically it's not really noisier. It's just that the noise bits, each individual pixel of noise will seem larger because you're cropped in 1.5 times on that noise as well as the rest of the image. The second thing would be less depth of field. So even if you got the equivalent of a 24 to 70, say like a 17 to 50 or something like that, that equates roughly a full frame 24 to 70 2.8. Well, if two lenses are 2.8 on full frame versus APS-C, well, you're not gonna get as much depth of field and you know, separation with equivalent lenses. Another thing would be less megapixels for photos. But you're gonna be down to just 10 or a little bit over 10 megapixels off of this 24 megapixel sensor in total. So yeah, that's gonna be a lot less resolution for photos, although video should be mostly unaffected. Also, when it comes to adapting APS-C lenses onto those cameras, well, most APS-C lenses are sort of in the budget world. It's a budget format, at least in the prosumer world. And there's very few really high quality APS-C lenses to adapt in the first place. Usually they're lenses you've kept around for a long time with a few exceptions like the Sigma 18 to 35, 5100, and maybe a couple more from other manufacturers. I mean, even things like the Sigma 18 to 35, which does come out to about 2.4, so a little bit faster, a little bit more depth of field, even after the crop factor. You're also in adapting anyway, not going to get very good autofocus or other camera corrections and controls when dealing with an APS-C lens. And even Sigma's 1835 and the other good lenses, when compared to full frame standard 24 70s and 7200s, they don't really stack up. They might be a little bit faster in terms of depth of field, a little bit blurrier backgrounds, but in terms of the zoom ranges and it, things like that, the overall range, it's still not quite going to be as flexible and as versatile as a general rule than your full frame glass on a full frame camera. With all that sort of stacked up, I feel like you're much better off adapting these lenses to like a speed boosted GH5 or GH5 Mark II, or even the GH5S is gonna get you just as good or better performance. And you actually get, you know, wider angles and, you know, equivalent to APS-C for a lot less price. And it's actually going to enhance that camera's abilities rather than sort of dumb them down to the format. Speed boosting the 1835 as the general golden standard leaves you with an F 1.2 lens in terms of light gathering, which is pretty fantastic. And an F 2.4 aperture equivalent, which again, is just as good as APS-C and significantly better than a full frame cropping down to APS-C. So yeah, general takeaway, you might as well just adapt it to a micro four thirds body rather than waste the time trying to adapt it to a full frame one. So yeah, I was pretty much like everybody looking at those facts thinking, why would anybody ever adapt a APS-C lens onto a full frame camera or the S cameras? You know, why would you spend all that full frame money and not use that full frame sensor. Well, I've got two reasons that have been slowly changing my mind. 
first off is this. So looking at the S5 here, this camera is pretty new and it shoots amazing video. It's, you know, under $2,000 most of the time now, and it shoots 4K 60 10 bit, which is insane. I don't think any other cameras in this price range in this form factor, other than maybe the GH5 Mark II can shoot 4K 60 10 bit in any sense. Well, the downside of that mode is that unlike every other mode, there's a 1.51, I think I've heard, crop. APS-C essentially crop in that 4K 60 mode, 10 bit or 8 bit. So to get around that, I mean, think about a 1.5 times crop on your widest angle lens. You know, my 20 millimeter just turned into a 30 millimeter. My 24 millimeter just turned into a 36 millimeter. It's a pretty significant difference and it can make it pretty hard to get a decent wide angle in 4K 60. So why not put a APS-C lens on it, which essentially matches the format. You know, you're not gonna lose any quality in video because, well, you're already gonna be at that resolution even on the full frame lenses. So why not use lenses that were specifically designed for an APS-C sized image. And the second reason is this, you know, I shot a wedding a few weeks ago, Indian wedding, a lot going on, and I had to shoot 4K 60. And I really wish I would have had something like this, the Sigma 18 to 50 for APS-C mounts like Sony E mount and L mount. Even though there's no even though there's no APS-C L-mount cameras, they're still making lenses for the L-mount with an APS-C sized image circle. And yeah, at that wedding, I was shooting with the 24 to 70, and eventually I switched back to the GH5 because it can do 4K 60 with no additional crop. With this, getting a decent wide angle was pretty difficult at 24 millimeters, or as we talked about, 36 millimeters. So now with this combination, I'll be able to shoot 26, 27 millimeter to 70 millimeter F2.8 with a tiny package, small overall size at 4K 60 with a effectively 26, 27 millimeter lens, which is probably good enough. So yeah, if you're shooting a ton of 4K 60, specifically on any of the S series cameras, that goes all the way up to the S1H, then a lens like this might just be perfect. But again, it all depends. What are you doing? If you're taking photos, is 10 megapixels gonna be enough? If not, skip the APS-C lenses. But Specifically that 4K60, if that's what you're doing, that's where a system like this is gonna to come to play now. Is this any good? Is this fun to use? Is it a good lens? Well, we've seen plenty of reviews on this lens on YouTube in general, but I haven't seen a single video review for this lens on L-mount specifically. So yeah, subscribe to see the first, as far as I know it, L-mount geared review of the Sigma 18 to 55 APS-C lens. It's gonna be an interesting one. How does it hold up in video, 4K 60 and otherwise, in photo, how's the build quality? We're doing the whole, you know, the whole thing. We're gonna go in as deep as possible in the time I've had this lens so far, and we're gonna see if I would get it or I would keep it. So yeah, if you're excited for that review, definitely subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.